Well, yeah, but the whole human condition is flawed. Yeah, exactly, exactly, which is, yeah. you know, philosophically is something I'm, I'm exploring throughout my music anyway, and something I've been quite clearly obsessed with since I was a child, you know, is Im imperfections, you know, hmm. human imperfections, human frailty, the human condition. Yeah, I'm obviously quite obsessed with it, and self-obsessed, you know, yeah. really. <laughs> You, you tell me any musician who isn't, isn't self-obsessed, you know what I mean? It's right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I but just don't think I'm that great. That's the difference. Whereas I think uh, some of the musicians might think they are that great. <laughs> I think that that's part of, though, your consistent way of pushing yourself and creating many, many projects. And, you know, I mean, you haven't done the same record twice ever. No, uh, it's, you know. it's constant dissatisfaction for me. It really is. I is mean, it it's, really? Yeah, I've, I mean, absolutely. If I, f if I finish a record, I mean, of course I'm proud of that record, even though I'm sitting there nitpicking it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And generally, by the time it's released, which I think is probably universal, though you've probably spoke to endless amounts of musicians who say by the time their record comes out, they've left it. It's, even, it's it almost impossible to listen to. Right. You know, I think that's fairly universal. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I mean, I literally will rip that record to pieces and I'll be desperate to better it, you know what I mean? Mm. And I always think whatever I'm doing now is the best thing I've done. But then by the time I complete it, I'll be annihilating it, you know. I'll be really <laughs> unhappy with that record. So th this is it. This is why I think essentially is one of the reasons why I'm so prolific is I'm just never satisfied, you know. I'm just never happy with these records. Some may say, well, don't release it then, you know. <laughs> Which you know, is probably a fairly valid statement, really. But for me, everything, music is uh, exhibitionistic. How can it not be, you know? So you had said that you're really on top of all the latest gadgetry and that kind of thing. I mean, you have to be really facile at using that in order to, if you're trying to create, like, the dream state. I guess I don't see that there would be time to get hung up with, wait, where is that sound? Where is that sound that I'm trying to make? So it seems like you've got you have just hours and hours and, and years and years of really learning the technology so that it can come out in the way that you want it to. Yeah, I mean, this is it, you know. It's, it's, everything is a learning process for me. I get new equipment, and I literally put it into practice immediately. I mean, of course, I do sit there with manuals, but I'm sitting there being constructive as, as far as I'm concerned anyway. I'm, I'm immediately using this equipment. I can't just sit there and tinker around, you know. It, it has to have meaning. Even though I'm trying to learn equipment, or, you know, sitting there with a, a biblical, biblical amount of manuals, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is what it can turn into, this stuff. I'm not just a tech nerd, you know what I mean? And in fact, I've, I've got no wish to just be a nerd who knows how to work these pieces of technology or whatever inside out. I approach the guitar in the same way, you know. I don't consider myself at all a proficient guitarist. I'm not in any traditional sense. I've just took what I can, you know. I've just pushed certain things out of the way and try and get to what I can, what's in my head, but with a disregard for tradition somewhat, you know. Because I, I, I can't be bothered to learn the, the traditional way of doing things. I can only learn my own way of doing things. I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Um because that's more exciting than trying to find out how other people do things or whatever or what the traditional way of doing things is. I mean, by doing that, you one makes a lot of mistakes, you know. Um, but again, I think there's a lot of beauty in mistakes in music, you know. Well, and that's you saying that there's mistakes also. Yeah, yeah. Just to, of course, yeah. it's all in, in, entirely subjective. It's like to others. To others, some, you know, sometimes I've found songs albums even entire albums i'm completely unhappy with will be some of my most popular work i mean it's often it often happens you know i mean this is it you know you can't second guess anyone so ju so just work for oneself really ultimately i think yeah for sure hey so you said that um you do watch a lot of films is there any movie that you would love to do a soundtrack for wow we could probably talk six hours alone about that sort of stuff. Okay. That is almost impossible for me to summarize. Okay. <laughs> I mean, of course, you know, you watch the certain movies that have stuck with me for years that were inspirational to pretty much all my music, and you think, wow. But I never, to be honest, I mean, most, most movies, when I watch them and I love them, I'm probably entirely satisfied with the way it worked, and I couldn't even see myself 
spoiling it, you know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and some movies you watch and musically they're just perfect, you know, or sometimes the music doesn't even enter into the equation, you know. Right, yeah, a lot of times it doesn't, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's almost almost impossible for me to, to call that one. Okay. <laughs> Was one of the God Flesh records recorded in a bathroom? <laughs> I think the... Um, the guitars and vocals were, were recorded in the bathroom in the house uh, we were living in at the time, I think in the early 90s, actually. That was when we first started getting our own equipment, you know. Mm -hmm. I think because we first started getting our own equipment and didn't have an allocated space, so to speak. So that was like poor man's reverb? Yeah, absolutely. We just, I mean, you know, we were clutching at straws. We were just learning, learning through your mistakes, you know. I know that I most certainly wanted to start producing our own records, you know, I wanted to get our own equipment instead of going in and out of other people's studios, which I found really dissatisfying, you know. Mm. I could never, you know, I always dreamt about my own studio, even when I was about 10, 11 years old, I always, my, my stepfather had some really primitive equipment when I was a kid, you know, and I used to love just tinkering with his equipment. I found it really exciting. First time I ever went in commercial studios, I found it a really nullifying experience you know i just the, the environment uh, working with other people you've never met before in your life and you know mostly having disagreeable personalities <laughs> <laughs> it all just you know all these things are just for me were just obstacles you know it's the uh, you know a, a music for me making music recording music is such an entirely personal thing that i don't wish to be doing this with three people sitting around and accommodating their personalities and and Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You yeah. know the, the the people from the studio or whatever. You know. You know. Some T boy on the side. Some engineer. Some some manager. Some whatever. I just have uh, for me. This is. <laughs> it, you know what I mean? It just. Yes. It, 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 it's a personal experience for me. It's like all you people get out. You know. It's like, <laughs> you, you, you don't even want to be looked at when you're doing this stuff. You know what I mean? It's this. I knew that the, the only route was to get our own equipment and to do. And, you know, and, and to get our foot in the door of recording our own records, we had to be, we had to take a lot of risks and we had to make a lot of mistakes, you know. Yeah.